You are listening to the Motherhood Unstressed Podcast, and I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. Welcome back. And if this is the first time that you're tuning in, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here and that you found me and the show and the work that I've been doing over the past year. And now you have access to all these amazing guests um, that I've been interviewing and their insights and their expertise and just their outlook on the world. And I tell everyone that I know each conversation that I have with all of these different people changes me, uplifts me, teaches me something new. And that's my hope for you. That's my mission with this show. Uh, If you don't know already, this is a show about empowerment and education, um, helping you create the life that you uh, love, that you want to live, whatever that means for you, because everyone is different. And my guest this week is completely in line with that ethos, that mission. I'm speaking with the incredible Phil Rosenthal. He is the creator of Everybody Loves Raymond, Somebody Feed Phil, and uh, I'll Have What Phil's Having, all amazing shows that I'm sure you already uh, are well-versed in, you know, because they're just classics. They're beautiful. Um, And they're everywhere, Netflix, Amazon Prime, syndication, you name it. Um, So I was watching... Uh, somebody feed Phil one evening, and it was like every episode, I was moved. I was almost moved to tears, and I was like, "What is going on? <laughs> I need to talk to this man. He's incredible." Um, because I'd always been a huge fan of Everybody Loves Raymond, um, and then I, I saw the similarities again in these new shows, and I just, I just had to speak with him because someone who can properly convey feeling like that, emotion like that. Um, through a travel and cooking show, I think is uh, someone I definitely need to speak to and share their story. And so I did. I reached out to him and I said, I want to talk to you about human connection because it's clear in the work that you're doing that you get it, you understand it, and you are able to showcase it in such a beautiful way that I'm sitting on my couch almost in tears. (laughs) So I reached out to him and I asked him if he wanted to do a show on that. And he said, yes. And I was so happy because I knew that it was going to create a ripple effect of positivity and joy. And that's my hope for this episode. And basically we talk about human connection and travel and food and and really how to be in the world. Um, What type of person do you want to be so that it's reflected back to you? And it's so simple. You know, it's the golden rule all over again. But I love his take on it. I love his personal stories that he shares. And uh, I think the message at the end of the day is what's important. This is what needs to be put out into the world, especially you know, at this time in history, um, you know, with everything going on, uh, I think it's really crucial and really important and it's going to make you happier today. So if it does, uh, please share it with a friend, share it with someone that you love and uplift them just like I was uplifted. And I hope that you're going to be uplifted too. I know you will. Uh, enjoy my conversation with Phil Rosenthal. This episode is sponsored by Motherhood Unstressed CBD. You can purchase our third party tested organic USA grown hemp in stores across the country or at motherhoodunstressed.com. Hello, Phil. Welcome to the show. I am so excited that you're here. Oh, aren't you nice? Thank you. It's yeah. nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. And you know, you're someone who is just so incredibly accomplished. Um, your work is just so it's it's gone worldwide, I think, for a really good reason. Um, but tell us, bring us back to the origin story of you. Wow. Well, when I was a kid, I watched a lot of TV. My parents said, what are you going to do, get a job watching television? And then when I finally did get a job writing television, I sent them the biggest TV I could find with a <laughs> note on it that said, ha ha. <laughs> but, but when I was watching TV, I didn't know there was writing and directing and producing. I just watched uh, The Honeymooners. You know that show? Yeah, Jackie absolutely. I, I just wanted to be him and Art Carney. I just wanted to be funny on stage. I didn't care how. And in school, the only way that you can do that without being thrown out is if you join like the theater department and do the after school plays and things like that. So that's what I pursued. And I went to Hofstra University uh, and took theater and they made you take all these other courses that I had no interest in. And I knew that I would never use like English. (laughs) And, And then sure enough, after school, you know, it's very hard to, to break into theater or movies or TV. So you do everything you can. So I tried writing and that kind of, I saw an inroad there. And so I started writing and then I moved to Hollywood and because that's where all the jobs are. And I got a partner, which I recommend if you're just starting out because it's, it's easier than suffering alone. 
and, uh, and you have somebody to bounce ideas off of. And so we started writing on shows, kind of terrible shows, but you got to start <laughs> somewhere. And then I was on a show that people did hear of called Coach, mm-hmm. working for, for uh, a great guy named Barry Kemp there. And during my third season on that show, I got a tape of a comedian who had been on David Letterman one time. And from that one appearance, David Letterman said there should be a show for that guy. And they set about looking for writers to create a show for this Ray Romano fellow. Wow. And I saw the appearance and I thought it was funny. So I took the meeting. And it turns out he was born in Queens like me. Mm -hmm. And for every crazy story he had about his Italian family, I had one about my Jewish family. (laughs) And that's that's how that happened. And so I based it on his actual life. And what I didn't know about the characters in his life, I filled in with the characters from my life. And so made that show. And that ran nine years. And after that, I did some other smaller things, but I always had this passion for travel and for the food in all the places I traveled. Right. And I actually convinced Ray, who was not into traveling, to do a show in Italy. And it took me years to convince him. I remember that. Do. Yeah. So when when we did that show, you know, I wrote it about a guy who doesn't want to go. (laughs) <laughs> and, and doesn't like it at first and then gets kind of he gets woke mm-hmm. <laughs> of Italy and the food in Italy the people in Italy the scenery and they're just travel in general and what it can do for you yeah. and, and I saw it that happened to the person I saw it happen to him wow like. it really did he's in Sicily right now with wow. his family that's right and and uh, you know when you turn somebody on to the stuff that means a lot to you and you see it means something to them that's probably why you do this right absolutely absolutely so that's everything it's not about money it's really about what you love in life so now for this food and travel show i'm combining everything i know about how to make a show how to tell a story in the service of everything else i love in life right Mm -hmm. family friends travel food laughs it's all I hope there oh absolutely and that was honestly the main reason that I reached out to you because I was watching the show and it was it was it was so moving in so many ways because it's very it's very funny and it's very light and it's really just beautiful because you're you're in all these amazing locations but the thing that really sparked something inside of me was that human connection factor you know And, and it's it's, you, you do that in such a brilliant way. So why, even going back to Everybody Loves Raymond, why was that always something that you wanted to express on the screen? Because it's there. It's there. It was there in Everybody Loves Raymond, and it's there now. Oh, thank you. Wow, it's a pleasure to talk to you because you seem to really get what I'm going for. So yeah. I'm delighted. Uh, I can't explain why the connection is there for you or the other nice people that watch. It's just who I am. You know? I know I can't be someone I'm not. So I'm just, you know, I've always tried. I think, but isn't that universal? All we do in our lives is try to connect with other people. So other people have other things going for them, right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not Mr. Universe. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a model. So I had this, whatever this is. And so that's what I put out and you try to get, you try to get that connection back. Yeah. Do you find when you go to these places that people are receptive to that or because, you know, you're from a different country or you're doing the show that they're more closed off. I found when I traveled to Europe, it was, it was hard to break down the walls at first, but then once you did, it was like they were friends for the rest of your life. That's a hundred percent right. And, and sometimes, you know, if you just put out a little niceness, you get niceness back. And that's, that's everywhere in life, right? You know what I heard? That people who smile at other people on the street or say hello if they sit next to them on the bus without expecting anything in return because some people think, who's this weirdo, right? Right, right. But just not, not in any kind of way other than hello, mm-hmm. right? Those people who do that, 
are generally happier people, right? For sure. So it's just, the, it's your attitude. And I think in today's climate, just going and traveling and being half nice, <laughs> you right. represent, you represent us, you represent the U.S., us, you represent people from our part of the world. It's very important. Yes. And I want to be friends with people from around the world, and I'm lucky to have this opportunity with the show to make those friends. This is the best part, even more than the food. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah. But even, but, but the food is, you know, I always say that food is the great connector. Yes. And, and for me, laughs are then the cement. Yeah, because a lot of the people, they don't even speak English. Like you have interpreters and you're, you're sitting together at this table for hours and hours and hours. Um, my, that one butcher, the famous butcher. Oh, I, I love, love that it. episode. I love Dario. Him. Yes, Dario. I mean, the connection that you two had, the manly men and all of that. If you haven't seen yes, the episode, manly, listener, manly. watch it. Yeah, I mean, how did that, how did that flow? Because it seems on screen like it was just incredibly effortless, even with the barrier of language. You know why? Because of him. Because that's his personality. Because he's larger than life and angry yeah. and wonderful and fun. You know, they're, they're, there's people like that. Uh, Massimo Batura. Yeah. He's like that. Uh, this girl that I met, she was, she, I don't know if you saw the episode we did in Cape Town, South Africa. Mm -hmm. So she was just working at the, at the store selling food. And I just, there was some connection there. I didn't, I said, come out and eat these snacks with me. She goes, I'm not allowed to <laughs> leave. I said, you're with me. I'll, uh, whatever trouble you get in, I'm going to take care of it. Right. That with me. And she was hilarious mm -hmm. and great and funny. And we're friends now. Yeah. You know, with the, with the, uh, with the Instagram and the instant messaging, right? Direct messaging. You can, you can really connect and stay connected. And then you exchange emails and texts and whatever else. But you know, that's the great part of this. Look what we're doing right now. I'm on my phone. Yeah, it's fabulous. It's such, yeah. I mean, as, as, you know, technology is kind of moving us into a fast place, I'm also really grateful that we can have conversations like this and then share it with the listener who's, you know, on their commute or walking their dog right now and getting exposed to all of your experiences in life and, and your experience, especially as a parent, because a lot of our listeners are moms and dads. Yes, I wanted to ask you, you know, what is some of your best parenting advice? How did you raise Ben and Lily to be oh. such amazing adults? Like, what, what would be oh. the one thing? I don't know. I'm going to give 99% of the credit to Monica. Mm. She's an excellent mom and is completely devoted while, while, while I'm the, the guy who goes out and works. It's <laughs> kind of traditional, I guess. But, but listen, I, there's nobody I love more than these three people. And so I made sure that even at Raymond, when we were running a, a, a big show, that I was home for dinner every night. Wow. That's important. And doing stuff together as a family is, is important. And, and uh, being there for them. That's everything, right? Uh, we traveled when they were very little. I don't think Lily was three, and I don't think Ben was six. When we went to Venice, Italy... Wow. Which I recommend as a great first trip with little kids. You know why? Why? Everything's, everything's a boat ride. <laughs> it's like the it's a small world ride, except everybody <laughs> who is Italian. This is true. This is true. And then I find when you get off the boat that your kids will walk anywhere as long as it's to pizza or gelato. And in Venice, it usually is. <laughs> I'm the same way. I, I think that's yes. fabulous. <laughs> right. I go that I go walk too for miles and miles. <laughs> but that's a great, you know, if you I see it as a great introduction to the world of travel because the kids, I mean, it's literally better than Disney World. Yes. Right. Yes. They're gonna love it. And the Italian people that I've found are so loving to kids. Yeah. Listen, all the cultures around the world are loving to their kids. Yeah. No matter where you go, we're all the same. We all love our kids. Yeah. Everybody wants the best for their children. That's right. So why are we fighting? Why, are there, why is there trouble? We all want the same thing. We all want clean air, 
clean water, clean food, our kids to be happy and healthy, right? That's all. So if we just followed those simple rules, I think it would be better. So are you running in 2020? Oh, no. <laughs> but, you know, there's plenty of people who are, and there's plenty of people who I think, I hope, have those values. It's very obvious who doesn't, but I, I, I just, it's not even political. It's common sense at this point. Right, right. And we're think- dangerously close to, you know, the point of no return. And I hope we're not. And, and I always have hope. I always think that, listen, I'll tell you one thing I've learned. In all my travels, most people are so much better than their governments. Yes. Right? When you talk to somebody, you realize they're like you. They want the same things. We're all people, you know, unless they're damaged or, yeah. or, or, or have really, really bad problems, right? But you... you you can't help anybody if you don't have the attitude of, of we're all human beings. Right. Well, and just like you said earlier, just having that niceness about yourself, having like that energy that you put out, you would be amazed at, you know, who you can meet and, and what connections you can make. What's the golden rule, right? Do unto others. Right. The, I don't have a big philosophy. That's it. Mm. So if that was every, that's by the way, that's at the center of every religion in the world yes the real center so that so just do that don't worry about everything else i love this conversation <laughs> <laughs> um what what about your parents your your relationship with them is just so heartwarming i mean i love it i lo- that's probably my favorite part of every episode is when you touch base with them and you're connecting with them they're hilarious um tell me about your relationship with them i mean when you were growing I up she- I owe everything to them, right? Mm. We didn't have a lot of money. Uh, They worked very, very hard, both of them. And my brother and I were not easy. I would say my brother was much, much worse even. (laughs) But no, (laughs) if you want to know the truth, I was the bad one. I I was uh, completely jealous of him. And it was a lot like I was the brother in Raymond. Oh. That's where all that comes from. Too funny. But what's nice is, and this is hope for you people who have sibling rivalries at home, is that now Richard is the producer of my show. Oh. He had experience producing other things separate from me. And then when I got this show, I asked if he would quit his job and be the producer on this, because yeah. this way we could travel the world together and we do and our our production company if you look at the end it says lucky bastards that's <laughs> us wow but i can now get to travel and do make the show with my best friend that's so amazing i mean and it seems like the through line through all of your work all of your you know your relationships is has been about being who you are and doing work that you love is that true yes because if you don't love it how do you expect someone else to yeah. That's You know, if I wanted to boil it down to business reasons, which I don't, I love every aspect of show business. I love the writing, the directing, the producing, the editing, the performing. Yes, all, it's all connected. I love every aspect of the business except the business. Mm. The business is the thing that gets in the way of the show of show business. You know, look how long it is between episodes. You have to wait for them to decide and give you the money and do that. It's all like... It's almost like you have to go fundraising. It's stupid. I yeah. don't like any of that. That's the, that's the drudgery part. But if you were to ask me today, was it worth it? Yeah, because I also then get to live the dream. Yeah. So that's and you are. Right. You are. You're creating this art every single time. Well, thanks. I, I do love it. I really do. Mm. So, you know, if there were one big takeaway from this conversation – you know, for anyone who is in the drudgery of everyday life, you know, trying to be the best parents that they're, that they can be and just trying to live yeah. a happy life, what would that be? What would be your advice? Be nice. Be nice. Be there for your kids. Listen to them. Love them. Right. Protect them. I don't know what else there is in life. That's everything. 
And mm. then, you, go, you know, you get to see them turn out. And every kid goes through a rough patch where they hate you. <laughs> but it's normal. You got to rebel. They got to, you know, spread the wings a little. They got to elbow out the, you know, make room for themselves. That's life. They're there to replace us. Don't forget. <laughs> that's why I just had two. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, but then I can tell you from personal experience, they, they come out on the other side and they're wonderful and great. And you, there's no one I'd rather be with is I have so much fun with them. We can go, we laugh, we talk. They're like, you know, they become your, your, your buddies. Yeah. That's fabulous. I love that. And I think too, like you making the effort to be home for dinner, like something as small as that, you know, change the relationship for the rest of your lives. And I take them with me whenever they can. I want them with me. Yeah. That's Listen, it. It's a, it's a one way street people. You, you, you <laughs> can't go back. We can't go back. Yeah. And if all we have is now you make it, make it count. Yeah, that's true, too. For a lot of people listening, your kids might be older. You know, it's not too late. Exactly. Listen, the, don't, harbor, don't harbor hurt feelings. Don't harbor, you know, grudges or I can't believe she said this to me. I'll never forgive her. Who wants that? Yeah. What would you rather have? Travel and buddies. That's right. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so we are at the point where I ask you some rapid fire questions. Oh, no. All right, I'll try to be back. Okay. A happy life is? Being with your family, friends, traveling, and eating and laughing. Yes. I'm grateful for? All of the above. Mm -hmm. The world needs? All of the above. <laughs> um, okay, and what's something that you've learned in life that you wish someone would have told you earlier on? The best advice I ever got. I got it when I was making that pilot of Rain. A uh, showrunner said to me, do the show you want to do, because in the end, they're going to cancel you anyway. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Anyone could take that and run with it in their life. You're very smart. I, that's what I always say right after that is that's your universal advice. It applies to everything. We all get canceled one day, right? So do the show you want to do. Yeah. So why do you think, why do you think so many people are afraid to take the risk, to step into fear, to put themselves out there? You, you always seem to know, like you just did what you wanted to do. I guess I was stubborn. Maybe I guess I, or, or I felt maybe not brave, but, but, uh, I didn't know what else to do. Mm. I like felt almost physically, I can't do this. Wow. Now that's not to say new jobs that, that i that, that I uh, hated, I did. I did jobs, you know, just to eat. But even when I was a kid in New York in my early 20s, right out of college in a, in a little apartment that I shared with another guy and had a terrible string of terrible, really terrible jobs, I actually was happy because I was on my own. I was out there. I was, you know, the pursuit of happiness. Mm-hmm. Never take that for granted, what we have, that w what we're lucky to have. Lots of places don't have that. We are able, think how beautiful that is, written to the Constitution, the pursuit of happiness, right? I love that. That we get to have that. So that's everything. So there's struggles, yes, nothing comes easily. Listen, I, this show that looks like, oh, they just give me this show where I get to eat. That took 10 years for me to get that show. Wow, no way. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And again, I would say, was it worth it? Yes. 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 Right? Yeah. And maybe the timing worked out perfectly anyway now. There's, there's definitely a, a, a hunger for a show like this. Uh, I wish there wasn't. I <laughs> wish that we, you know, you didn't need uh, a television show to make you feel good, but... Listen, it makes me feel good. Same. I okay. love it. I love Thank it. I love this conversation. I love your work. I love everything that you stand for and put out into the world because I feel like it's uplifting all of us in the social consciousness. So thank you. Thank you for being on the show and sharing your light. Well, you made my whole day. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.
You have been listening to the Motherhood Unstressed Podcast, and I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. If you found any kind of value out of this conversation today, please share us on your Instagram stories, tag us at Motherhood Unstressed, and hit those five stars. It literally takes five seconds to do that, and you will feel so good for uh, giving back to the show if we have given anything to you. Have a great week. Love you guys.